Hello, everybody. Right. Once again, we have our favorite Australian, one of our favorite people in the whole world. You guys <laughs> get so excited when I have the lovely, beautiful Tamara on our show. I feel like Esoteric Atlanta is also her channel as well because she brings so much positivity and comfort and information to all of us. And before we started recording, I was actually telling Tamara that all of the spiritual people that we all tend to follow, especially Janine, people that really know what they're doing, they all, they're all saying the same thing, guys. And that's what's so exciting is that every person is saying yep. the same thing, which means we're good, yep. the best is yet to come. So hello, let's get yep. started. Hello, <laughs> how are you? Well, look, I'm now look, on Monday, on Monday, I was like pacing around here. Um, and I remember saying to the guys when we got the lockdown, because we were told about like, four o'clock in the afternoon that we were going in lockdown at eight. Oh. Yep, that night. I know, four in the afternoon, eight o'clock lockdown. Very, very interesting. But I said to them, I said, we're going to be doing two weeks. Well, I was told today that we're probably going to be doing three, you know. So I said, well, you know, like if we're going to be doing three, they'll probably just, you know, stretch it out to four. Another you year. Know? <laughs> but, yeah, but on Monday it's like I was walking around and I got, I got a message. I got a message from God, right? Right, well, I'd say God because I was talking to somebody the other day about when I sold my property in the city and it was 2 o'clock in the morning I was woken up by this booming male voice and it, and it was like you have to sell everything and it was like holy shit, right, and I lived in this house on my own, right, and it was like what? And it's like, listen, listen, you have to sell everything and you have to move to the country and you have to be in a house that's got a view where you can see forever. I used to live in houses with the high fences, yeah? Huh? That's what you have to do. And it needs a veranda. But you have to own everything you have to sell the, your cars you can have one car everything has to go well i found the house yep yeah, and 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 it's going to be in the country and i rang a very dear friend of mine and all australians that are listening to this will know who i'm talking about when i say brocky okay so i rang i i went to sleep i woke up at 10 o'clock i rang and i went pete he goes, T? And I went, shit. And he went, what? I said, you're not going to believe this. He goes, what? And I said, this booming male voice woke me at 2 o'clock this morning and said, I have to sell everything and I've got to go to the country and this is what I've got to do and this is where I have to live. And, and I said, so um, what do I do? And he went, shit, T, I think that was God. <laughs> and I went, what? He said, I think, he said, a booming, I said, yeah, booming, this booming voice. He said, other people have said this, right? He said, God's sending you on a mission and there's something, there's something very, very important. I go, so what am I going to do? He said, we're well, going to sell, aren't you? <laughs> so, so we did the house. I sold. I ended up on my birthday sitting on the side of a hill because they said a side of a hill road frontage you can never be built out and I was sitting in the lounge room of this house with this view 180 degree view over hills and mountains and farms and trees yeah and that's my house now yeah yeah that's my that's my little cabin that I call it yeah and um and it was really really interesting because not long after that my mother got very sick with cancer and because I owned everything, I didn't have to work and I could look after her. And I, actually I had the opportunity then of healing my relationship with her before she died. That's amazing. Yeah? That's amazing. It, it, was, it was just it was incredible because I didn't have to work. I could be with her and I could look after her, yeah? Mm. And she was lying in bed one day and she's sort of like, and I was doing with the swabs and stuff, and she just looked at me and she said, you're very, very kind. You're very kind, you know. And I went, I went, well, you're my mum and I love you. And I said, but you've given me a hell of a life. 
You've given me one hell of a life. And and I said, you know, and it's it's been really, really hard, really hard because of things that you've done, et cetera. However, I want to thank you because if you hadn't have been like that and given me that the life that you gave me and the challenges that you presented to me as a mother to a daughter, I said I wouldn't be the woman that I am today doing the work that I'm doing on the planet. So I said for that I will be forever grateful. Anyway, so Monday here, right, getting back to Monday. Right, you have to ring. You've got to ring Bryce. What do I have to ring Bryce for? You've got to do a quick show. Why do I have to do a quick show? They want your mantra. Oh, okay, they want my mantra. Yeah, they want your mantra. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, okay. But there's more. There's more that you need to put in the mantra. Oh, okay, cool. So when do I need to be on? Oh, Friday. I go, oh, okay, Friday. They go, yeah, Friday, because by, by Friday we'll have all of this and everything will be ready and people will be ready. I went, okay, cool. So I, I have to, I'm laughing because Tamara knows this. You guys, you guys watching, your, your jaws are probably dropping because I told Tamara that I have gotten so many emails and so many requests for the mantra that she spoke about last time. And the minute she said that to me, I was like, oh my God, you're, so there you go, guys. If you don't believe in a God, now you should, because I didn't prompt Tamara for this. She, she, you know, she comes on whenever Tamara wants to come on the channel, she comes on the channel. Cause I said, I, sh I share this platform with her. So there you go, yep. God, that's a God wing for you. So I'm just so grateful to have you here this morning. So <laughs> cool. cool, cool, cool. So what do we do? What do we do every morning when we wake up? We spread our arms out wide, okay, and it's like, and I had to laugh because look, I had these conversations with upstairs, you know, and I went, uh, so what do they, what do they do if they've got a bloke in bed next to them? Because when they do that, they're likely to, they're likely to sock him in the eye. <laughs> right? So yeah, so whatever. If there's a guy there, go outside. Yeah. So so here we go. And it's called, Good Morning, God. I'm open and receptive to receiving all good. Today is a wonderful day of prosperity in all areas of my life. My income is constantly increasing. And the thing is what I found, because I do this every morning, yeah, is that through all of the, it's like my income is just constantly and then what I do is like, oh, good, I've got the money to buy them supplements. I've got the money to buy them food. I've got the money to do, yeah? Mm -hmm. So none of the money actually stays in the bank. All of my money is going out and helping and supporting people, yeah? yeah. So our income needs to be increasing because they, our income comes from the universe. It doesn't come from out there. It comes from the universe. So you've got to be open and receptive to receive. Then I have 100% perfect health now. Every cell throughout the whole of my body is 100% perfect now. I have the energy and the stamina of a young, fit, healthy teenager now because we are all, we're going to have to be in perfect health and perfect health comes to you when you are in the right frame of mind but we're also going to have to have the stamina. So it's like, right, I've got the energy and the stamina of a young, fit, healthy teenager now, okay? May the whole world and humanity be the vision you created it to be now. I now do the work on the planet that only I can do and no one else can do. I now fill the places on the planet that only I can fill and no one else can fill. So with that, and like I've said to like all of the people that I've been reading for, my EA people, my EA family, it's so funny because it's like I'm, I'm getting ready to do like, you know, to do a reading and I set up all of the charts and stuff, yeah, and then I go, oh, 
Carolina. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. Right? And then I get New York. New York, New York. <laughs> so I, I sit and I sing as I do the charts. Okay, so I now feel the places on the planet that only I can feel and no one else can feel. So, like, why? I, what I'm saying to them when I'm doing their charts, I'm going, now do you get this is what you're here to do. So, you know, and I and I explained the programming and I said until I can get to you guys and do deprogramming with Born to be Free, you just need to be on top of it mm -hmm. because by you having the knowledge that this is what's going on and where that where this is coming from, you can now take responsibility for that and how much you allow that to override you. Get right. the picture? Yeah. So, yeah. So then we go. May every human being honour your name now. This is God I'm talking to. Yeah. May every God-given soul that departs the earth plane through unwise choices now be at peace. May each and every being who have and intend to inflict harm on all who are made in your likeness be made rid of now. You, it's May you always place me in the right places at the right time for me to fulfil my soul's purpose. May you support those still asleep to awaken as I let go and let God. We have to let go and let God, people, because we can't make people be where it is that they're either not ready to be or where they choose not to be. We can't. We have to let go and let God. God knows more than what we do. God has the power to move heaven and earth. Yeah? So let go and let God. So then we have got... Um, right, then. And by the way, you'll have a copy of this, everybody. Um, Bryce will be putting it up so you can get your copy, okay? And I apologise to everybody that sent me emails, but it's like I don't have time. I don't yeah. have time to be sending out, you know, copies of this to everyone, right? Yeah, and I'm going to just such as I'm going to put this on the community board, guys, um, so you can copy and paste. I know somebody had questions about doing that. I actually made a demo video that you can see in the community board on how to copy and paste if you're confused. And that seriously is the easiest way to get everything out to you guys because I get influx of emails, so does tomorrow, and we don't want to miss every anybody. And so this is uh, the ability for you to then copy and paste it for yourself or take just to take a screenshot with your, your cell phone so you have it. So, yes, yeah. thank you for saying yeah. that tomorrow. Yeah, cool. So then we go into I now surround, I'm now surrounded by your armour as I make my way walking the path you direct me to walk. Really yeah. important. And then we go, may all of the above come to pass immediately under grace and in perfect ways and then you just end it with thanks be to you god it's beautiful it's in your right it's always in god god we get so you know i say this on my channel a lot that we have been kind of indoctrinated to put boundaries on god like oh god can't do that or god can't you know but god doesn't have boundaries and he's yeah. always comes yeah. in at the perfect time the perfect. Do you time. know what was really? Do you know what was really interesting, Bryce? My dad dropped dead of a heart attack when he was fifty-eight, and my mother turned around and said, "How could God do this to us?" And I turned around and I said to her, "God didn't do this. God didn't do this to us." And I just said to Mum, "You know," I said, "Dad was a very, very hard man." 
like he had his belief in God and everything else, but he was very hard and he was very bitter. Mm -hmm. And and I said he carried a lot of a lot of bitterness inside of him, and he had he had a soft side to him, but he had a very hard heart. Now, when you carry that energy, you will be drawn to food mm -hmm. that is not good for your heart. Yep. It's the same as you know. I say to people like in Born to Be Free, I go, well, you know, you've heard the saying. You know, what, what's wrong with them if they got shit on their liver or something, yeah? And it's like, and it is, it's virtually saying that they've got this and what they're doing is that they're eating foods that are bad for their liver. Mm -hmm. So they'll end up having problems with their liver, with the, the clearing of the, the emotional freedom and a lot of people have downloaded that, which is like, which is phenomenal. I think it works out to about 27 yeah. like American dollars or something. Super, super but it's, like, it's to keep you clear of all of those negative emotions because with the they're upping the ante at the moment and they are trying to push us to the brink. Mm -hmm. So the more that they can have us be riddled with negative emotions, mm -hmm. the more control that they actually have. And us being within the negative emotion state feeds them. Yep. So it's time to starve the yep. It's time to starve them. I mean, and they when you step back, you can see it because they've convinced people that feelings are facts. So there's all this confusion. Uh, we they talk about like all this like trigger people that get triggered. Like if you get triggered, then it's somebody else's fault. Well, in my spiritual study, those triggers that you have are ways for you to then reflect on yourself and heal yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Use you know? that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. absolutely agree with everything you're saying. Totally, one hundred percent. Like, like get rid of it. And if you're if you're if you've got a problem with another person, if you can't if you can't make peace with that. Do the ho'oponopono, which is which is the one to do with the Hawaiian healing, mm -hmm. yeah, and also self sabotage. Like just just get rid of the stuff, yeah, yeah? right. Because yeah. then what that's going to do? That's going to starve them. So the more positive you can be, so this is where my stuff from my seminar cancel cancel comes in. Mm -hmm. So whenever you get a negative thought in here, you go. Thanks for sharing. Cancel, cancel, and replace it with a positive thought. But you've got to be on top of this, guys. And, and that's like, how and afraid of us, we are. Like, You're afraid of we're, us. We're heading, we're heading down this last stretch. So then, what I saw, oh my God, right? This was last night, right? Lying in bed, what did I see? I saw an avalanche of water coming from high up and just like going like whoosh and just taking everything and washing it all clean and everything is just going to be washed away into the ocean. So we know what that is, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, they've got to get rid of all of that in wood. All of that has mm -hmm. got to go. It has to go, yeah? But yep. then, yep. then this morning when I woke up, I was given a vision of a chariot, like a chariot up in the sky with all flames coming out of the back of it as this chariot was racing forward. And there was like a whip, but it wasn't being used on the horses. Yeah, it wasn't being used on the horses. And I looked at it and it was Trump. Trump was in this chariot coming down like you wouldn't believe. The look on his face was set like I am, this is it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with the whip and it's like, it's like, right, I'm, I'm, this is it now. I'm coming to get them. So it's getting close. It's yeah. getting really, really close. And yeah. I love that because you can feel that those that who are left in this dark are panicking. And that's why things have like sped up is because it, it, it's do or die for them. 
Like literally it's do or die. And, and I believe personally that they screwed up our times so that we didn't know. And they made astrology sound evil. So we wouldn't study it so that we wouldn't yeah. know. We wouldn't yeah. know when, when the age was over, but, and it would kind of somehow manipulate and they could continue to rule, but yeah. God is so much more powerful than they are. And oh. we as God's children are so nice. much more powerful than we are, than they are. And that's why they try to dumb us down is because they know they're scared of us. They know yeah. that we're more powerful yeah. than they are. And, but Literally. guys, we're at, we're at the end of the good book. And in the end, the yeah. God wins. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll tell you something because Janine's in Canada, isn't she? Mm -hmm. I saw the most amazing, I got hold of the most amazing, amazing video and I have to, I have to go in search of it again. And it's called The Burning Years. And it was a documentary that was made in Canada. And it was to do with all of the women that they burnt at the stake. It was the most amazing, amazing documentary. All of the around. women that they burned at the stake, but have a guess what? We're back. <laughs> no, who do you think we are? All of these women warriors. Yep, it's us. And what have a guess what? Have a guess what? You ain't going to burn us at the stake anymore. It's like we're going to burn your asses from hell to breakfast. Yeah, over game over. And that's so it's. Really it's Scott McKay or Michael Jacob, one of the two said, pointed out a few days ago, like how many women, how many yeah. women are in this battle right now? Like it's overwhelmingly yeah. female. Yeah. That's right. But yeah. it's all of us that were, that were burnt. Yeah. Yeah. So get, try and get hold of that documentary. Yeah? I just wrote it down. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to look for guys and I'm going to place a link to it in the description box below as well for you guys to watch cool. too. Cool. So now what I got is illusion, illusion, illusion. All is not what it seems. So, therefore, don't buy in to what is being presented. It is all an illusion. Don't lose your faith. Just hang in there. You're just going to hang in there, guys. It's not long to go. And sing. Just walk around and sing like I do, yeah? Like nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina. <laughs> okay. Clear the negative emotions and remember the cancel, cancel. Then also remember, let go and let God, because God is bigger than you. God has more power than what you have, yeah? Mm -hmm. Another thing I'm saying to people, please do not send me any more negative videos about anything. I am not interested. Don't send me more videos or pictures of the children. I know what happened to the children. Yeah. I know what yeah. they've been doing to the children. I know about that. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know about that. Yeah. Because the more you put that out there, it's negative. Mm -hmm. And the more you're feeding their narrative, because the, the negative keeps us in fear. Yeah. And, and places us in a in a position of like, oh, and you pull your energy into you because you're reminded about what they did to children, yeah? Mm -hmm. Our energies are not to be pulled in there to be out because this is the way that we're going to stop it. It's our energy that's going to do that, right? And we all know about trusting in God but tie up your donkey. Like mm -hmm. God is amazing but it's like, hey, it's like it's a partnership here, guys, mm -hmm. So I'm trusting in God with everything, but I've got my I've got my uh, my supplies mm -hmm. of my organic soups and my water and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, so you have to you have to like do what it is that that you need to do as well. Yeah. And I will say, so there's a story in the Bible, and it's actually we read it in the Gospel of Holy Twelve. Do you remember the story where the lady reached out to Jesus when he's passing by and touched his gar garment and healed her from the Bible? She's walking through, there's a story, Jesus and his disciples are walking through a crowd of people and this woman reaches out and touches Jesus and she's immediately healed of her disease and Jesus turns around and said, who touched me? And she says, I did. And there's a conversation that ensues. Well, in the gospel of the Holy 12, it's even more detailed, this story where he t explains to the woman, his disciples like kind of bat at her, like don't touch him. And Jesus is like, no, 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 she can touch me. She heals herself. It wasn't just me healing her. It's because she That's believed. It. She That's believed. it. You've got it. You've it's got it. And it's, you, you have to meet God. 
Yeah, it's the same as a girl like with the, this is really, really fascinating, the girl um, with the multiple sclerosis. Because she had experienced mm -hmm. the deprogramming work and she started to get feeling back in her fingertips, mm -hmm. yeah, it was like maybe I can get rid of this, maybe this mm -hmm. can go. She yeah, part she and participated was, too. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, but it's like with that. It's like with my like with my cancer girls and stuff like that. I always, I always do. Um, I take them back, and I work with the subconscious mind to take them back to when the subconscious mind decided to create the illness in the first place. Because there's always, you're not born with this. If you're not born with this, you have got a perfect, 100% perfect, healthy, blue, healthy blueprint in there, mm -hmm. in there. But then I've got to then deprogram them of all of the negative suggestion of all of the doctors and all of the nurses and all of the, oh, God, yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay, so then um, what was the next thing that they wanted me to do? Um Ha, ah, you can't go wrong if you make mankind your pursuit from your heart. You can't go wrong. If you put money in materialistic things before mankind, it's like you're going to end up up the creek without a paddle. Yep. Oh, yeah. So believe in, believe in him, Trump. He's with the high command. Believe in him, yeah? Yep. Now, then they said to me, you've got to tell people about, you've got to repeat the story in regard to Robert Kiyosaki and Buckminster Fuller. Bucky would say, never, ever, ever set goals. Get the vision of the outcome that you want and then let God and the universe take you on the journey. I right. let you take care of the journey. Just focus on the outcome. So what I got through was that I have to remind people, hold the vision of how you want the world to be and God and the universe will take care of the rest. I love that. Hold love the that. vision. Don't get caught up in the negative narrative. Hold the vision of what it is how you want it to be because we are manifestors. Mm -hmm. God made us in his image. He manifested mm -hmm. what it is that we live on. He manifested it. So That's we have, we have the same we have the same ability. Darkness and evil can't exist in the light of God. Mm -mm. darkness and evil cannot exist in the light of God. So when I got the whole thing about the white white light cross and how you put yourself in that of a night time, yeah, yep. you are totally protected and nothing negative can come in and touch you. And then when you wake up in the morning, you go, okay, armour of God. And I actually see myself like in 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 an, a suit of armor, yeah, yeah. like the like the knights of old, yeah? yeah, they would be dress in their armor. That's I see myself getting into my armor, and I go armor of God, armor of God, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what you focus on is what you create. All right, so Chucky Babe, do you have any questions? Well, actually, I had one person, and I don't know if we can do this today, I'll let you decide, wanted you to explain a little bit more about the pendulum, on how to use the pendulum again. Oh, okay. Yep, okay. Oh, now, yep, okay. They just said to me, I've got to explain about the grades. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The grades, the grades, the grades. Right. So now, I've been doing reading, reading charts for 40 years. 40 years ago I started, yeah, um, and then 30 years ago started Born to be Free. Now, I would sit there and I would go to upstairs, upstairs and my guys, yeah, upstairs. I call them my, you know, my guys. <laughs> um, so I sort of sat there and I went, okay, you've got to explain some things to me because I'm, I'm looking 
at, you know, this, this chart. I'm looking at all of this. I'm looking at how I've been taught to do this because I didn't study how to do my work. It just came to me, yeah? Um, and I was told that I did something. Oh, this woman, this woman blew me out of the water, yeah, because um, I've, I was like, I was married when I was very, when I was young, very young and had my daughter. So I've had three divorces. Yeah. And with my first marriage, my first husband was gay and, and I ended up like I left and this, somebody took me and I had nothing. I had nothing, absolutely nothing. And this is what I say to people, materialistic things, you know, like you have to put your freedom before money you have to put your feet your freedom before materialistic things and for me the most important thing was for me to be free i you know i had to get out out of that being trapped and being trapped in this this situation anyway so eventually somebody took me to have a reading done and this woman looked at me and she told me a whole lot of different things yeah but she then looked at me and she said you're going to do what i do now listen Here's me, 23 years of age, on a pension, a supportive parent's pension, and cleaning houses to make ends meet. And then I had an ex-husband that just wanted to destroy me. So every time I got on my feet financially, he would take me back to court and I'd be wiped out again, yeah? Really nice person. Yeah. Anyway, he's dead now. Uh, but all of them, all my, all my husbands are dead, the three of them, yeah. Anyway, so... Um, so she said to me, you're going to do what I do. I went, what? She said, you're going to do what I do. And I'm going, oh, this lady's totally out of Come her again. tree. <laughs> yep. Totally out of her tree, yeah. And she said, you're going to start with numbers. And she said, you worked in pyramids. And you worked with the mathematical equation and everything to do with the pyramids. And you, and then you deciphered like writings and all of this sort of thing. Yeah. So she said, I was going to do that. Then I'd study astrology. Then I'd learn cards. And then it's like, then as I had deaths in my life and both of my granddaughters died as babies. Um, you know, like, and dad died when he was 58. But with every, every death of like my brothers, my sister, my grandbabies, um, I, I, and she's, this woman said to me, and as you go through life, you're going to then start receiving messages and seeing things. Yeah. And, you know, and like I said to you, I'm like, you know, this woman's no. <laughs> It's crazy. And eventually she said, you will then go and you will do, um, you're going to do something. And she said, you're going to do a lot of study. Now, listen, guys. Okay, listen. I got four out of 100 for maths. I got 10 out of 100 for English. I got like 12 out of 100 for history, 14 out of 100 for geography, or like 99 out of 100 for music because I'd started playing piano when I was four. Um, so all of my creative subjects got me through, yeah? And she said to me, she said, you will study and you will get qualifications and you will take people on a journey like in an aeroplane and they will enter the plane in one state of being and then they will then come off the plane and they will be totally different. So anyway, so that's the story. That's how it started with my work, yeah, um, in a nutshell. And a lot of people go, you know, oh, obviously she's had a, you know, she's been raised in a, with a rich family and like and all of this sort of stuff. No, nah, no. Nah. My dad was a was a farrier. He, was, he used to um, shoe horses and he was a blacksmith and mum worked in the family business and then it became engineering, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but as I say to people, um. Ah, yeah, as I say to people, all grade six souls have very, very rough childhoods and lives, yep, and they choose this because the soul has come to help humanity. So now let's have a look at this with souls, all right? So what I got through was the earth plane is a school 
and the school starts at kindergarten and it finishes at grade six. From there, I got that 90% of the world's population on a spiritual soul level at the time that they were born were all born into kindergarten. So they came onto the planet to learn and to grow. However, they don't have to learn and they don't have to grow if they don't want to. It is all pure choice. Right. 5% sprinkled over grades 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, remaining 5% born directly into grade 6. So the 5% in grade 6 volunteered to come down onto the earth plane. So years ago, they came down to hold the energy of the planet. When we had the Jupiter effect in 1984 and we had the big alignment, that's when we had the big spiritual opening. Mm -hmm. So then that's when the grade sixes that had come onto the planet to make a difference, that's when they started to surface. The astrology, the numerology, the cards, the spiritual, all of that started to, you know, to bloom. It started at that point in time, yeah? Yeah. Now, what is happening What is happening is that the kindies, right, they come in with a mindset of being totally and utterly self-centred, don't care what it is that they have to do in order to get what they want. They will lie, they will cheat, they will rip off, they will walk all over anyone. And the people that they do that to are your grade six people because your grade six people are open, loving, generous, yeah. Now, what can happen in this lifetime is that those kindies, if they want to learn and if they want to grow, can move from the kindergarten energy and they can come up through the grades. Mm -hmm. Those that are sprinkled over grades one, two, three, four, five, moving up into the grades. So what we've got to do ideally is to get the 95% all in grade five So that therefore the grade five energy vibration then combines in with the grade sixes. But kindies, because they've been in the majority, label grade six people as being either weird, different or strange. Yeah. (laughs) They're weird. Yeah. And we'll tell a grade six person, oh, you just need to get normal, you know. And it's like, well, what's that, you know. (laughs) Well, normal is like us, you know. And I remember my... One of my sister in law said that to me once, and I said, What's normal? Yeah. And she said, Well, I'm normal, and your brother is normal. And I went, Me be like you guys? It's like, Yeah. I went, That's the last thing I'd ever want to be <laughs> is to be like you guys. You, you live in the suburbs, you've got two and a half children. It's like you bitch about all of the women that are not at, around your kitchen table but uh, at a party, but when all of those girls, you bitch then about the ones that leave and then all of the men are around the barbecue drinking beer, it's like, hello? Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about the it's about the kindies being like the grade six. However, you can't make kindies learn and grow. You can't. You can't go down there and grab them and go, hey, come with me. I'm going to teach you grade six mathematics. They'll go, what? They can't get it. So the only way that the kindies wake up is by the grade sixes getting the confidence and the self-esteem and become empowered within themselves and trusting God and get out there and, and do it. And by doing that, you become a beacon light to the kindies in regard to how life can be, but it's their choice. And I think that's what I heard a lot of people say. This is the rapture, guys. The rapture they, they taught us was our bodies moving up, but no, it's our understanding. It's our understanding moving up. That's the rapture. So that's yeah. that, and that's great because Charlie Ward says that too, doesn't he? Say don't don't shine a flashlight in somebody's eyes. Shine it on the floor so they see where to go. Yeah. 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 You know, but you shine it on the floor. I love Charlie, but you shine it on the floor, but it's up to them to want to walk Mm -hmm. and go in that direction, you know, and it's it's like, and you know, and I said to somebody today, I said, you know, I said, there's going to be, there's going to be loss of life. Oh, yeah. There is going to be, there, there is going to be loss of life. And I said, and that I'm so very, very sad about. Yeah. However, it's like, if it's a loss of this amount of life, mm-hmm. 
yeah, is better yeah. than a loss of this amount of life. But we're going to give them the choice and if they choose not to take it, then it's like then it's like that's that's it's their the journey. Choice. Well, it's like, you know, I, I think about when anybody who's ever had like a small child, and we actually do this with our dog too. When we go to the, I can't say the word, he'll freak out the D O G P A R K. If I say that word, he'll start barking. But, um, you know, when you have a little kid and you're at the park with a really little kid, it's time to go. If you try to negotiate with the child, they'll run off because they want to stay at the park. But if you just yep. say, okay, I'm going, I'll see you later. And you start walking to the car they'll run right. after you. Our dog yeah. does the same thing at the DOG PRK. If we say, come on, let's yeah. go. He'll run and want to play. But if we walk to the gate and that's how I see with the, with the kindergartners, it's like, if you just do your thing and just yeah. say, here I am and not don't yeah. try to pull them along, they'll yeah. eventually walk over to see what it is that you're, you're saying. That's it. You know? Yeah. You know, and I think the, the thing that I found is that it's the most fascinating thing with born to be free is when men come in to do my to do the work. It's like I have all the women stand up and applaud. Yeah, because it's like for men to walk into a seminar yeah. and say, "Hey, I've got unresolved things from my childhood, and it's eating away at me, and it's ruining my marriage, or you know, it's ruining my relationship with my child, mm -hmm. and, and I want that fixed." Yeah, always applaud. So. I haven't got my my big purple pendulum, but it's like this is one of my crosses. I love this cross. It's beautiful. I, love this cross. I know. It's just divine. Beautiful. It's divine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and another thing, it's like I connected with anybody that has not seen a movie called Heaven is for Real. Yeah. With Colton. Okay. Please, 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 please get that. And I, I can remember I posted that. It's, it's a wonderful story, isn't it, about a real story, a true it's story. It's a real story. And then I went online last night and there was an interview that came up. There was an interview and it was with Colton and his father. Yeah. And it was done in, uh, I'm not sure what year it was, but it wasn't, wasn't all that long ago. Yeah. Stunning, 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 stunning story, yeah? And then the girl with Jesus, painting Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that was amazing. So here we are with the pendulum, yeah? And there is a, you can get a book called Pendulum Power or go online and go like how to use a pendulum. Now, I learned to do, to work with a pendulum when, back in 1990. That's how long I've been doing it for. But I do it for my health. So every day I get up with my Tiaga and I just do with my pendulum, does my body need this today? Mm -hmm. And then it will tell me what I need, how many capsules or how many drops of something. Yeah. Right. But with it, you just say you've got to you've got to establish yes and no. So you just hold on to it between your your thumb. And your first finger. Do you know yeah. what that mudra is in yoga? Do you know what this yeah. means? Joining yeah, a god and man. Yeah, that's, that just gave me chill bumps. That's the joining yeah. a god and man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. 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 And then if you can rest your elbow on a on a desk or on a table. Yeah. So it's just hanging. And then what you do is that you just ask it to give you a yes. Now my yes goes clockwise yeah so there it goes and then you have to say to it thank you yeah so thank you so you've got to stop after each question then you ask it to give you a no give me a no please give me a no my no is anti-clockwise yeah yeah and it's as simple as that. Yeah. And then we go, thank you. And then it stops. And I say, because I have a pendulum as well, and I will say, guys, you do have to clear every time you get a new pendulum or something, you have to clarify with the pendulum what is yes and what is no. Because if you don't clarify that, it's going to be giving you the answer. But if you've misinterpreted it because you don't know what yes and no is, you do have to say thank you. You do... The pendulum yeah. wants manners. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, 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 it does. 
Um, yeah. But, you know, like a lot of people say to me, well, I asked the pendulum, was I going to get a job? And it said to me, yes, and I didn't get the job. And I go, you don't use it for that. Right, right. You know, don't use it for that. It's like go and have a reading. Go and have a reading yeah. with somebody, yeah? yeah. Um, and yeah. that's what you do. But your pendulum is for you and you can do it with food mm -hmm. and you can do it with children with food if children have got some problems. Mm -hmm. you know, and they may have an allergy for something. But for me, what do I do? What do I use it for? I use it for my my, medi my medicines. Yeah. Like all my supplements, uh, every day I do that because I don't want to be taking, I don't want to be overloading my system, yeah, with one thing. But another thing is that I don't want to be wasting my money in taking right. a whole lot of supplements when my body doesn't need it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm really glad you said that. That yeah, some people will use pendulums like a magic wand for everything, but it can't it can't be used for everything. It has to be very yeah. I'm so glad you said that because that's come up a lot in our community actually about the pendulum use. And it's like it there's only really specific things it can be used for. And you're right with stuff like your job. Go have a reading done. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, you know, yeah. or what you do, what you do. And this is what I say to people. They go. Oh, oh, and one thing that you can put in that good morning God, if you want to, if you don't have a relationship, you can put in that. Um, it's like, please, God, send me the man that is right for me. Or, you know, please, God, send me the woman that is right for me. But you've got to put in now. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now. Now. Okay. Got it. Spiritual uh, one is on a different timeline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got it, right? And also your subconscious mind's the same. You know, it doesn't know yesterday from tomorrow to, you know, 10 yeah. years in the future. Right. And this is why, you know, with with doing that, when you're saying I have a young, fit, healthy body now, or I have 100 percent perfect health now. Yeah. It's like you're you're doing that and you're you're making that statement. And the thing is, is that your subconscious mind doesn't know reality from non-reality. So what you present to it is what it's going to give to you. Yeah. So if you, if you talk about like age or aging or stuff like that, you will. Yeah. You will. Yeah. Yeah. If you sort of whinge and moan and complain about your body. So when people are working with me in regard to weight loss, it's like, you know, just I'm slim and slender now. There was a book written years ago, Think Yourself Thin. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So some of the some of the um your EA people have actually have got, got onto that, which is the emotional eating. Mm -hmm. Because it's like the emotional eating, you know, like that's coming from this negative state of being. So right. you just shouldn't have food because you feel like eating food. You know, and people will look at me and they go, Is that all you're eating? I go, Yeah. Yeah. And they go, you hardly eat anything. And I go, and that was also very interesting because years and years and years and years and years ago, I read about a, um, a Tibetan monk and he said, eating a lot of food ages you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your body does not need a lot of food. No, you know, it's so funny when my sister got pregnant with her first child, um, right. My nephew, Charlie, I went to like every doctor's appointment with her because it was the first grandchild. It was the first nephew. And before she was even showing, like right when she went to the doctor to confirm that she was pregnant, I remember the doctor telling her, you only need about right now, you only need about 1600 calories. And most people eat more than that anyway. And this was a doctor telling a pregnant woman that she only needed right. about 1600 calories. We do not yeah. need as much as we think we need. And in yoga, they tell us that too, because you eat a lot of food and it will bog you down. It will literally uh -huh. you heavy, like so, bogged. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So who is it that pushes pushes food at us all the time? This cult. Yes. You've got it. And yeah. then let's put this on the television and let's put that on the television and let's put this on the television. So therefore they're sitting there and they're watching television and up comes this ad and this ad and this ad. So then what do they do? They get up and they go to the cupboard and they get the food or what do they do? They dial into, you know, like, you know, Uber Eats to deliver yeah. food. I, I don't eat spring. Yeah. I don't eat much at all. I kind of peck all day and I've had people in my yeah, life. That's like, me. Oh, 
you yeah. must have an eating disorder. It's like, no, actually, I'm pretty healthy. I just don't. I'm very Vata. You're very Vata as well. Are, are you Vaya? That's a Vata. And Vatas don't really you peck. Um, but it's literally, yeah. guys, food is energy. That's all it is. And so it just has That's to fill your body. And different and you said, like, like attracts like. So you're going to, the liver thing, like you, sometimes you don't, you'll be eating the foods that aren't good for you because like you're in that state of mind. That's right. Where the food can help. If you, if you know, if you don't know our Vedic medicine with food, you can counter that by what you actually, by the fuel you eat. It's incredible. Yeah. They, and I guarantee you guys, they know this. They oh, they know it. it. And they, oh my God, it. they know it. They know it. It's like, you know, I've been lecturing, like now sharing at my seminars. Like I was teaching about um, fluoride in about 19. It's so about 1992. Oh, wow. I started teaching about fluoride. Um, I started teaching about um, aspartame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yep. all of that, all yep. of that. I started teaching about electromagnetic frequencies back then. So yep. it's like so I wear a Q-Link and I've now just ordered Q-Links for the boys and a blinged up one for me and a blinged up one for my ex-son-in-law's wife. So, I, you know, so I just yeah. said, now just humour me. I tell them, just humour me, right? So then I said to Cooper, I said, I've got this really great sticker and it's for the back of your phones and it's like it's amazing, Cooper. It is just absolutely amazing. He went, I am, I am. Because, I mean, he grew up from a little boy with me putting silver stickers on everything, like on all of his equipment and all of his play stuff, yeah? Yeah. And he was wearing, like, a Q-link around his neck when he was three. So I know, you know, it's like I'm the weird friend. I'm the, no, I'm the weird he's, he's prepared. He, he, he was given – imagine if we all had had that education as children. I know. Let, let me tell you what they did to me. You're going you're gonna to die when you hear this, and I'm still shocked. So I was born in 1983, um, and I had always had – from the time I, was, time I was born, I had these digestion problems. Since the Great Awakening, I started – I haven't had any. I think it's the self-healing and everything, but that's a different story. Well, my mother would put um, apple juice, as you do for children, like watered down apple juice in my bottle, but it would make me sick. And so my mother took me to my pediatrician and said, she can't drink apple juice. She has a really hard time with milk. What do I put in her bottle for her to drink? Guess what the doctor told her to put in my bottle? Diet Coke. <gasps> Diet Coke. This with a spa time. Yes, oh. this was in the early 80s, guys. And I want I want to just think that that doctor just didn't know, like they didn't know then and he thought it was harmless and the diet version didn't have sugar in it. So, but yeah, they, they told my mother to put Diet Coke in my, bi bi my, my bottle, guys. That's how young, that's probably like 1984, 1985. That's how young I was. I was still drinking from a bottle. Can you imagine oh if you God. saw that today, if you saw a baby with a bottle with Diet Coke in it? I mean, thank God I'm I'm where I am now. But yeah, I mean, it's not my mother's fault. That's what they told her to do, and she trusted the doctor. That's right. That, yeah, that's him. right. That's yeah. right. And that's what I say to people: Who was around you in the first ten years of your life in an adult form, and then who was around you in a peer group? Yeah, that had a strong personality. So then you start to work out how you were programmed, where all of that actually came from, yeah. you know. Because as I say to people, you know, like lack of confidence, low self-esteem, fear of saying no, fear of financial scarcity, fear of failure, fear of, fear of, fear of, fear of, you know, um, and negative belief systems, who I am isn't good enough, who I am doesn't deserve. We're not born with any of that, yeah. No. We pick that up. And that's because of who we have around us in those formative years. So then we've got to get in and we've got to do the deprogramming, yeah? Yeah. So it's like they talk about people being programmed in cults and having to be deprogrammed. All every human being is yeah. programmed. That's, that's life. Programmed. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally yeah. life. It's 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 so true. It's um, and I think you know, I know my digest. I know Rh negative blood, which is what I have, has digestive problems. I get that. Like there are, but also I think you're right. Growing up, I was pushed into such a um, 
my family was like pushed education. We went to private schools and I look back, there was a lot of symbolism at that private school. I don't, I don't have a lot of memories from high school. Weird things happened. I had a weird occurrence when I was 15. I got really sick and I had scratch marks all over me. Like, so I think a lot of that stomach problems was actually emotional too, because of this. And, and yeah. as we walked into this new awakening, I haven't had any problems. And it's like, I think right. just being in the light and knowing now, like actually knowing how, what's going on. And when you know, knowledge yeah. is power. When you know what's going on, absolutely, you know what the truth is yep. no matter what people say yes. to you, you're standing in that truth. Yep. And the truth is powerful. That's it. And that's it. You've got it. You know. And like I say to people, it's like all you got to do is just call on God. Mm -hmm. Oh that's yeah. It. I'll, I'll when I would call on God. Yeah. There was one, sometimes when I'm like. Sometimes it's kind of like a divination I do with myself. And I've done this ever since I was in middle school. Um, if I'm kind of confused about something, I'll be like, all right, God, what do you want to tell me? I'll just pull a random book and open it up and like put my finger down and see what it says. And when I was in the eighth grade, I yeah. used to do it with the Bible. And I would say, okay, God, whatever you want to tell me, you know, and I would close my eyes open and just put my finger on something. Well, there was one, I, I, was, in, I was in the eighth grade and I was having this really emotional time. I think that was when my dad started kind of having affairs. And so I was kind of picking up on that and I pulled the Bible out and I was like, just tell me what you want to tell me, God. And I put my finger on it. It's a verse in Psalms. And it said, for he will deliver the needy who cry out. And I've never forgotten that. Yeah. For he will deliver the needy who cry out. Yeah. And that's something like God is, and sometimes we, we talk about this, like trust, uh, trust God, but tie up your donkey about the guy who was praying to God for help. It was a flood and helicopter comes by. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, why yeah. don't you come God? And I was like, I sent you yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. But that was interesting when you're talking about the Bible, because I remember I always, and I got really, I got good marks with like anything to do with like Bible studies, mm -hmm. anything to do with Jesus and all of that. And I can remember it's like I got an award because of like John 3, 16. John 3, 16. Yeah. Yep. And I just stood up there and I just recited that. And it's like, well, you've won. And then yeah. I used to sing in the in the in the choir at church. And so I used to and I, I sang a solo one year, and it's like, Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like I was about like eight. Eight. So it's like so my connection with like with Jesus, um, yeah, goes yeah, yeah. It was there. It was there with me. Yeah. All right, darlings. So that's it. Yes, that's and I will again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this all up on the community tab, guys. So it won't be in the description box below. You guys know that we're having to like disable a lot of comments due to censorship. We're trying to push forward with all the freaking out deep. People that are on YouTube, we got to be really careful. But if you go over to the community board, if you don't know where that is, go to the home page. You'll see like home video playlist community. Hit on the community tab, and you'll see the community board come up where the mantras from tomorrow will be listed for you to copy and paste or take a screenshot. And there will be comments there that you can leave that are separate from the video, just to fool the Zuckerbergs out there. So, <laughs> um, okay. yeah. So, and another and another thing is that uh, okay. All of the people that have had sessions with me, I um, we will be sending because we've got like a database of them. They'll mm -hmm. all receive it in an email form from the office. All right. So if they've had if they've had the soul reading session with me, they will get their copy. They will also get the copy to do with the um, to do with the the pine needles with the tiaga. For yep, for the fallout, the protein fallout, and they'll also get a copy of the um, the stuff to do with that. So if they get pushed, then they know they know exactly what to say. Okay, so if there's anything that I share and I go, well, there will be a copy. All of the people that are, you know, a part of my, I call them my esoteric <laughs> Atlanta group. Um, it's like they will they will just get copies sent from here from the office to them. I should change the okay. name of the channel from Esoteric Atlanta to Esoterica Atlanta and Australia. So it could be EAA. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> EAA. <laughs> All right, I guys. Love it.
Well, thank you so much for doing this with us on a Friday evening your time. So, and hold strong, Australia. We we know that you guys are like in the thick of it. Oh, I know. Yeah, like- but uh, but have a guess what? They have actually locked down Canberra, and they haven't been they haven't locked down Canberra yet. And it's this is the first time. So I'd say that there is a big that they're dealing with there because that's where all of that. Yeah. So all of our political, that's where all of our political power is, locked down, taking down. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you know it, you can't unknow it. So, all right, guys, we'll we'll talk to you all soon. Bye, guys.